السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وبعظيم سلطانه وصلى الله على خير خلقه محمد الصادق الأمين المبؤوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم مكتبنا منهم My dear brothers and sisters continuing on our series of akhlaq good character which is the hallmark of Islam for which the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him came the main purpose was to introduce us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the unity the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to elevate our character and akhlaq to the best so today's topic is on shukr or gratitude and as we mentioned last time in the session on sabr or patience and resilience that sabr and shukr patience and gratitude are two sides of the same coin so either a person is in a state of sabr or in a state of shukr so today we are going to talk about shukr or gratitude or thankfulness on the day of judgment when we are all gathered together from Adam alayhi salam Adam till the last baby born all, pre all present in front of the Lord of the worlds everyone gathered in one place a very difficult situation where the people are sweating the sun has been brought the sun that's created for that event and there is no shade and there is a lot of distress and people are running around crazy looking for salvation looking for someone to save them there will be a call a summoner will call where are the Hamidun and some people will get up and they'll be taken and entered directly into paradise just imagine on that day a group will get up and nobody can fake it that day and they will be escorted by the angels into paradise people will say who are these people these are the Hamidun who are the Hamidun they used to do hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prosperity and adversity Sarra wa darra, whatever situation they faced in their lives, they were always grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Hamidun. So keep this in the back of your mind, this picture of being escorted into paradise because of this one trait that you are always thankful and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what we should aim to be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Which means Therefore then remember me And I, Allah speaking I will remember you And وَشْكُرُوا لِي Be grateful to me وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ You know kafara we'll talk about that the opposite of shukr in this sense is kufr for those who know kufr we know kufr most people as disbelief but the other meaning of kufr is to cover the truth to deny the truth to not acknowledge the truth okay so here you will notice that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has joined his remembrance with gratitude that gratitude is an essential part of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. That you cannot remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without being grateful to Him because if you truly remember Him, you will find so many reasons that your heart will feel gratitude. Now, as we said, the opposite of shukr, whoever doesn't do shukr, show gratitude, is kufr or lack of gratitude or ingratitude or denial of the truth 
And there are many, many ayats in the Quran where this is laid out, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. That indeed we guided him, mankind, to the path, the right path. Whether he was grateful or whether he was ungrateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Sulaiman, the Prophet Solomon, if you remember in the chapter of the ant, and after that, uh, when he encounters this queen of Saba or Sheba, and her throne is brought in front of him in a miraculous way, what does he say? قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ فَضْلِ رَبِّي أَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُرُ وَمَنْ شَكَرَ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ رَبِّي غَنِيٌ كَرِيمٌ So Solomon Suleiman alayhi salam says this phenomenon, this miracle that has happened is from the bounty of my Lord to test me if I am grateful or ungrateful. So even the chosen, the elite, the, the messengers and prophets of Allah were tested to see if they showed gratitude. And then he says, and whoever is grateful to Allah, he is not doing Allah any, any favor. He is being grateful to Allah for his own good, because it is for our benefit. And he who is ungrateful, Allah is al-ghani. He is self-sufficient. He is not in need of your gratitude. And yet, he is most generous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called shukr or gratitude as a part of ibadah or ubudiya for which we are created that Allah has created us to worship him to know him to acknowledge him and it is part of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have attained faith, eat and drink from the pure things that Allah that we have given you. And then he says, Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyahu ta'budun. Show gratitude if it is truly Allah that you worship. Part of that worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to show gratitude. And this is the point that Iblis, Satan, when he was rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was cursed for not obeying Allah's command, and he asked for a reprieve till the day of judgment, and Allah granted him that out of his wisdom, what was his plans? What did he promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, وعن أيمانهم وعن شمائلهم ولا تجد أكثرهم شاكرين. He tells Allah subhanahu wa taala that I will lay in ambush to your servants, these children of Adam, and I will come from in front of them and from behind them and from their right and left. We are not talking physically, but means I will come to them with whispers, with with suggestions. And they will listen to me and you will find that the majority of them are not grateful to you. So he takes the lack of gratitude. He knows how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people to be grateful. So he says, I will attack them in this way. I will make them ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the strategy of Iblis. And Allah, and did he succeed? You answer for yourself. We have to answer for ourselves. Do we fulfill the right of being a grateful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the majority of people. He says, وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ And indeed your Lord is full of bounties, unlimited bounties he gives, bestows on the human beings and yet the majority of them are not grateful 
majority of them are not grateful. Now what is the importance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us if you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what will you get out of it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that if you are grateful you will safeguard the bounties he has given you. Not only that but Allah will multiply and increase his bounty on you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ And when your Lord had this announcement made, what was it? لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful, Allah will increase His bounty on you. وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ The opposite. إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Then indeed remember and know that indeed the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that. Now there is one thing interesting that for many things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised rewards. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that we will enrich you with wealth. When he says that, it says, Insha'Allah, Allah, if Allah wills. When he says, I will provide you risk or increase you in risk your provision, he says, Insha'Allah, if he wills. He says, I will answer your dua, ijaba of dua, if he wills. He says, Allah will forgive you if he wills. Allah will accept your tawbah if he wills. But for this reward, he doesn't say that. He said, La azidannakum. I will certainly increase it for you. He doesn't say, if I want. Do you get the point I'm trying to make? That this is a confirmation. You want the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Show gratitude to Him. And gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also protects us from His punishment. In the dunya, in this world, and in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِأَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ why would Allah punish you if you believe and you show gratitude? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shakir. He loves gratitude. He accepts gratitude. And he is all-knowing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and rewards gratitude in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In takfuru fa inna Allah ghaniyun ankum wa la yarda li ibadihi al kufr. If you show ingratitude, Allah is not in need, He is ghani, not in need of your gratitude. Wa la yarda li ibadihi al kufr. And He does not like from His servants to show ingratitude. And then he says, وَإِن تَشْكُرُوا يَرْضَهُ لَكُمْ But if you show gratitude, Allah is pleased with you. And at the end of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَيَّجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ And indeed, Allah will reward, give the jaza to those who are shakir, those who are grateful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are going to go do an exercise on this at the end of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of his bounties so that we may give thanks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butoon ummahatikum la ta'alamuna shay'an wa ja'ala lakum us-sama wal-absara wal-af'idah لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That we took you out from the wombs of your mothers and you knew nothing like the babies are. And we gave you sight and we gave you hearing and we gave you hearts to perceive so that you acknowledge these things and you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا And if you try to compute, to count the blessings of your Lord, 
you would never be able to do them. You can get all the supercomputers of the world together, they would not be able to compute the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on any one of us. And Allah, after saying that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَذَلُومٌ kafar." So many countless bounties, and certainly insan, mankind, la certainly zalum, he's doing zulm, injustice, and kafar, that he's a denier of the truth, denier of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not acknowledging them. And then in Surah Rahman, all of you know this ayah, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which of the bounties of your Lord will you deny? There's a narration that when this surah was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ first recited this surah to the jinns, the jinn kind. And every time they heard this, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُ مَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which of the favors of your Lord do, would you deny? They would respond by saying, مَا مِنْ There is no blessing from our Lord that from um, our Lord that you deny well al hamdan hamdan thanks and praise be to you every time they would respond when he re when he recited this to his companions they didn't they listened to it they didn't say anything and the Prophet ﷺ said the jinn were better than you because when they heard this this is how they responded so reminder for us how do we respond to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we show gratitude? First step is to recognize the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge. In what way? The gift itself, what he has granted you, and we'll talk about some of those. And then to reflect, for example, your eyesight, your vision. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, out of his wisdom, children that are born without vision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his tests and trials, takes vision from people who had vision, okay? So how do you, what, first thing is to recognize it and to see what impact that vision has in your life. What does this gift, how does it apply in my life? Well, one way to find out is to go around one day blindfolded and then you'll realize the importance of the vision. But we should reflect on these things. So first thing is to recognize the gift and then what is the value and benefit of this gift for me? And then recognize where this is coming from where this is coming from, who is the bestower of this gift and see what attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were operative in bringing this gift to you. For example, the example we have taken, what was operative? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will through your parents, through the genes, the codes that are written in the, the gene that ca genes came from your father and mother to give you the vision. Now, it would be unjust to just look at my father and mother without seeing where it all comes from. That every, every na'ma, every blessing is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to recognize that so that then we can put the immediate means through which it is coming. Okay. For example, if you're needy, a generous person comes and gives you some money. Yes, you should be grateful to him, but no, who made this person come? Which is Allah. He is the one who wrote my risk, my provision. The pen wrote it on the lah, on the tablet of destiny. Allah had ordered this. It's not the pen who's giving me this money. It's not the, 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 the parchment or, or tablet on which it was written. Not the generous, it is Allah. So in every gift, we have to trace it back to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the grantor and Allah is above all. He is transcendent and He is the unique bestower. He can give you 
Through means, he can give you without means. So the first step in gratitude is at least to acknowledge and know what this is. And when we acknowledge that, it should give a state of joy in our hearts that you are happy that you were given this. And that should generate gratitude in your heart. Now, sometimes you may be grateful and you are consumed by the gift itself. And then you forget who gave you the gift. The joy should not be of the gift itself. For example, to a child, you give them a new toy. For the next 10 minutes, his joy is of the toy. He's forgotten who gave him that right so an example is given by Imam Ghazali he says that a king wants to make a journey and he wants somebody to go along with him so he gives this beautiful horse to one man as a gift and this is a very expensive horse very fast horse and this man is so thrilled with it now he can have three three responses one he is thrilled with the horse, with the gift itself. And if that's all he is, and if he found a horse like that in the jungle, wild, and he caught it, it would give him the same joy. Whether it came from Allah, as, uh, from his master as a gift, or whether he got it in the jungle is the same. The second one is that he recognizes my master, my king gave this to me. So my king must think of me as someone special. So that's the minimum level of gratitude that he's not just consumed by the gift but he thinks about the bestower of the gift. And the third level is that he recognizes this is from my master, my king and I'm going to use this horse to defend him, to be with him in his companionship, to come closer to him. And that is what is meant by true gratitude. That when Allah gives us something we shouldn't just be consumed by that and we forgot who gives it to us. And the next thing after that, that we acknowledge it and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our tongues. As we said, you see something beautiful, you say subhanallah, walhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. These adhkar remind you, la ilaha illallah, nobody gave it to you except Allah. Subhanallah, what a beautiful gift. He is above all imperfection. Alhamdulillah, out of gratitude. And therefore, I am going to use what Allah has given me as a gift only in ways that He would love for me to use it. That I will use His bounties where He has commanded me, not use it where He has pro prohibited me, and to do what He likes me to do with this. And part of gratitude is abstaining from wrong, from using his blessings in his disobedience. Okay. Allah has given me a hand. If I harm someone with my hands, then I'm showing ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given me eyes, as we said. If I look at something I'm not supposed to look, Take an example of a billboard, you're passing that you shouldn't look at, there is something bad on it. You have shown ingratitude for your eyes. You have shown ingratitude for the sun. You have shown ingratitude for the light that has lit that up so that you can see. Allah created light and sun for you to see. You're using all of these blessings in his disobedience. So remember that abstaining from wrong use of Allah's blessing. Another way of show, showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, for example, we have many narrations that the Prophet sallallahu taught us that when some good news comes to you, something that's pleasing, you fall in sajda, sajda of shukr, the prostration of gratitude to glorify, acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And doing extra ibadah, extra charity, extra salah, out of gratitude. You know, in the Indian subcontinent, sometimes they say, you know, go do two rakat of salat of shukr. And some people say, well, 
There is no such thing as that. Well, look at it this way. One night, the Prophet ﷺ came into the hujra, the room of his beloved wife, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, and he lay down next to her. After a little while, he asked her permission. He said, oh Aisha, if you give me permission, then I will get up to worship my Lord. And our mother Aisha said, radiallahu anha, that, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I love for you to be next to me and to be able to touch you. But you can stand and pray in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he got up and he made wudu with a small amount of water. And he started praying in the night. This is extra salawat. And he was weeping and he was weeping and he kept weeping and kept weeping till the adhan of Fajr was called. And she is observing this. Then she says, Ya Rasulullah, why are you weeping so much? When Allah has already revealed in the Quran that he has forgiven all your sins, if all mistakes, past and future. What's his response? Should I then not be a grateful servant of Allah? He was standing all night in prayer, extra salawat, out of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to do as much salah as you want out of gratitude, because you are showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your gratitude. You want to give as much charity as possible out of gratitude, do that. Any extra nawafil that you want to do. Okay? This is how we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are tears of thankfulness. There's an interesting narration that one of the prophets in the past was passing by somewhere and he saw a stone through which water was coming out. And many of you have seen this before, right? Through the stone's layer, water was coming out and he stopped and he reflected on it. And he was wondering about it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed a miracle for him that the stone spoke. He said, O oh Prophet of Allah, I am weeping out of fear of hellfire because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waquduhan nasu al hijara. The fuel of the hellfire is men and stones, and I am a stone, and I am weeping out of fear of being a fuel in the hellfire. Then he said, O oh Prophet of Allah, can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spare me from the hellfire? And apparently he was told that Allah has spared you from the hellfire. And he left. And it is narrated that he passed by there again many days later and he found the stone again weeping. Water was coming out. He said, what is, why, why are you in the same state now when Allah has protected you from the hellfire? He said, I am weeping out of gratitude that Allah has saved me from the hellfire. So, true tears of thankfulness. The tongue, the heart, the actions using those nama for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, pleasure. The Prophet taught us this dua, many of you know, after every salah, Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enable me, help me to remember you and to be grateful to you. We are asking Allah, help me to be grateful to you and to worship you in the best way. <coughs> the Prophet said something to the effect that Someone who has been given four qualities has been given the best of this world and the hereafter. What are those qualities? A grateful heart. The heart full of gratitude. A remembering tongue. A tongue that's busy in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An enduring body. A body that strives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a faithful wife. So if you've been given these four You've been given the best of the dunya and akhira. <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ teaches us 
that Allah is pleased with his servant who eats and drinks and then gives thanks to him. It's very simple. Every time you eat or drink, don't neglect to say Alhamdulillah. The way to work on this is every sip in your heart say Alhamdulillah. If you practice this, at least it will come some of the time. Every morsel you put in your mouth, quietly, we are not trying to show others, say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Practice that. Because Allah loves that. <coughs> Talking about the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gratitude and ignoring them is ingratitude. What Allah, we frequently talk about our ailments, what we don't have, whereas we should be talking about everything that we have, that we take for granted. And if you will not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for small blessings, ultimately you will become so callous and so sort of oblivious to the blessings that you will not thank Allah SWT even for great and blessings. So if you start thanking him for everything, if you thank Allah SWT for your shoelace, certainly you'll thank him for everything above that. Okay. And if we don't thank people through whom Allah SWT bestows some goodness to us, then we do not thank Allah SWT. So be grateful to people also. One time the Prophet ﷺ came into his house, there was a piece of bread lying on the floor. What did he do with it? First let me ask you, what would you do with it if you found a piece of bread here on the floor? Straight in the trash. That's an honest answer. Okay. What did he do with it? He cleaned it, he blew on it, and he ate it. Treat the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with respect. Because if it departs, it may never come back. Ask the people who do not have a piece of bread. Ask the hungry people who are given one dry piece of bread, which you can't even chew hard and say, what is this? What pleasure it gives them. When you're truly hungry, a dry piece of bread tastes as good. Is the biryani and anything else. Maqlooba. Okay. If you are truly hungry. So don't undervalue, undermine the value of every blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that Dawood alayhi salam once asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his own way, which, what is your littlest, your smallest blessing for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him. He said, take a breath. Now imagine. A breath. And you can test that. Close your nose and mouth for two minutes and see how much you need that breath. And it's given to you for free. No charge. The Prophet ﷺ taught us that sadaqa or charity is due on every joint of your body. Many years ago, I used to tell the story of a patient in the 1980s who had come to me, a grown man in his 50s. And he came, how are you doing? And the moment I asked him, how are you doing? He started weeping, an old man in his, you know, older person. I wouldn't call him old now because he was old for me then. A young man. So he showed me, hand was bandaged, his right hand. He said, I lost my thumb in a chainsaw accident and it has completely changed my life. This, just this. One joint. This is a human, this opposition function of how it impairs you. Now I can tell you, every joint is important. I didn't give enough shukr for my knee joints. And yesterday I was told that you should get a knee replacement done. SubhanAllah. Ask the person who's sitting in the chair in Salah, who 
would love to put his forehead down on the ground in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cannot because of his knees and his back. Ask him what was the value of the back and the knee. So we don't recognize these things. Salman al-Farsi radiallahu anhu says that there was a man who was given many luxuries then they were taken away from him and he continued to be always thankful. This is the one, the Hamadun that we were talking about before. Thankful under all circumstances. And he was asked why everything that you had is gone. Why are you so thankful? He said, I am grateful for what I have that I would not trade for anything. My eyes, my tongue, my hands, my feet. So I still have so much to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. So my dear sisters and brothers, what is the gratitude of your eyes? To see something good, you talk about it. And if you see something bad, you don't talk about it. You lower your gaze from things that you should not look at. What is the gratitude, way of showing gratitude of your tongue that you speak only good or you stay silent? That you don't backbite, that you don't lie. What is the gratitude of the ears that you accept when you hear something good and you reject when you hear something bad and you don't listen to things like backbiting? What is the gratitude of the hand that you don't take that doesn't rightfully belong to you? And that you not withhold your hand from giving and being generous. Don't hold back from generosity. What is the gratitude of this, our heads, our brain? That you seek knowledge and you bow your head only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this way you can look at every bounty from top to bottom that Allah has given you. Just to see something, there are billions of cells in your retina, billions, rods and cones in the day and night. You can see in the night, there are people who cannot see in the night. There are people who cannot see colors. The people who lose their vision. And sometimes you must remember this very important, that we always, when we are getting things, we think they are bounties. And when things are kept away from us, we think we are being punished. Just remember sometimes Allah's keeping of luxuries away is a greater bounty and blessing than of giving them to us. Because in his infinite wisdom he knows that if he had given us that what we desired it would have taken us away from him. So sometimes not giving us taking things is to bring us closer to him. <clears throat> And just remember, he is the all-wise. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahmatullah said that he does not understand religion who does not count affliction as a blessing and ease as a disaster. Sometimes ease, plenty, is a disaster and we see all of that. And sometimes the affliction makes us, the goal is what takes us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A true blessing is that which orients us towards Allah, makes us think of Allah, makes us love Allah, makes us want to be near Him and to please Him. But if something is given, that makes us forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or worse, to become disobedient of Him, then that's not a blessing, no matter how big and beautiful it seems. And many times the blessings are such that Allah will remind people on the day of judgment when they said I that such and such adversity came to you and I kept it away from you. Remind me of something that you needed to travel, I provided a traveling companion for you. Remember when you proposed to that girl that you wanted to marry, I kept other proposals better than yours away from her so that you could marry her. So many things happen that we do not know. Hamd, showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying thank you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all praise be to you, 
is the language of the people of Jannah. On the Day of Judgment, the Prophet ﷺ said, He will be the first to arise, the first one, and he will be given a flag in his hand. This flag is the flag of hamd, of praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inspire him. He'll fall in sajda, in prostration in front of Allah. Allah will inspire him to keep praising and thanking and doing hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as has never been done before, before he asks. And the flag that he's given is the, the flag of hamd. And when the, the people will enter, inshallah, you and I, when we enter Jannah, what will we say? قَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهُ وَأَوْرَثْنَا الْأَرْضَ نَتَبَوَّأُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْآمِلِينَ That the people entering Jannah will say Alhamdulillah that Allah has fulfilled His promise and He has made us inherited, inherit this, this Jannah, this paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that's the beginning and the end He says دَعْوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَتَحَيَّتُهُمْ فِيهَا سَلَامٌ وَآخِرُ دَعْوَاهُمْ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That in Jannah, what they will be, when they, they, will, they will glorify Subhanak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greetings in Jannah will be salam and the last of what they will say is Alhamdulillah when they Alhamdulillah, this is the language of Jannah. As we know, the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of them, one is relevant to this. Which is that name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ash-Shakur. Ash-Shakur, the appreciative. He is grateful for you being grateful to him. And he expresses his thankfulness in his own majestic way by rewarding us even more for our gratitude. Unlimited rewards with money multiples. So let us reflect on these bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and see what is the best way. Of these, the ones that help us to reach the ultimate joy of paradise should be looked at first, the knowledge and ma'arifah Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the essential tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are people of tawheed of unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should thank him that he has given us that because without this there is no entry into Jannah into paradise thanking him for who he is in terms of his forgiving us in terms of him providing for us protecting us for hiding our mistakes and our faults and our sinfulness and being merciful to us under all circumstances for having provided us guidance so knowing that Allah has provided guidance what should be our attitude to follow that walk in that path of guidance that he has given us Al-Quran his own words so what is gratitude read it as much as possible regularly reflect on it and act on it he sent us the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is gratitude? To love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to know about him, to send salawat on him all the time and to walk in his footsteps. To love what he loved. To dislike and leave what he disli disliked and left. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one who gives us tawfiq to act. He gives us the ability, the facilitation. And he provides us opportunities, special opportunities. This is the month of Rajab, which is, we are the third of Rajab. This is one of the, the sacred months that Allah has given us. Okay. So when we see the moon Rajab, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this month of Rajab and the Shaban. And say, Ya Allah, help me to reach another blessed month, which is coming in less than 60 days, which is Ramadan. So Allah has given us special places like Mecca, the Kaaba, Masjid al-Nabawi, Al-Aqsa, and our masajids, this masjid. We should show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have given us this. Okay? So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us steadfast, gives us istiqama in his path, we should show gratitude for that. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires us with, to do something good, we should sh show gratitude for that rather than saying, oh, look how good I am. I thought of this. Okay? 
if we have what we are talking about every time, husnul khuluq, we have some of these characteristics. Like if you are looking at yourself and said, well, alhamdulillah, I am from the grateful. Say alhamdulillah that Allah has given you tawfiq to do this. Allah has given us life and health. So use your life and your health before you lose it. Allah has given us brains to think, eyes and ears and nose and tongue and the heart, how we safeguard that from things that pollute it. All of these things, relationships, our parents, our children, our spouses, our siblings, our neighbors, gratitude for them is by treating them in the best possible way. The knowledge and education that Allah has given us, whether it's religious knowledge, whether it's secular knowledge, you know, we go through college, we, we get straight A's, we should say Alhamdulillah, and so on and so forth. Similarly for our provision, the food we are going to eat, the drinks we have, the, the chai that Brother Khurram and his wife bring, we should say Alhamdulillah, these are just the means. The wealth, the occupation in businesses, if we are doing halal business in occupations, we should thank Allah that Ya Allah, you kept me from haram and you gave me this avenue to support my family. If we have honor and dignity and respect in the community and with people, this is from Allah. Thank Allah. If we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we do hamd, then another hamd is due because this was granted to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, how can I thank you? Because if I thank you for your blessings, that thank that I'm is from you. So I have to thank you for being thankful. And if I say that hamd again, then there is another hamd due on that hamd. How can I ever thank you? Because my last hamd requires another hamd. It's endless. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded that your realization of that is gratitude. Okay. Subhanallah. Just one word about another level of, of shukr, of gratitude is qana, which is contentment and satisfaction with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined to be our lot, what Allah has given us, to have qana with that, to have contentment and satisfaction, that I don't look at others, what do they have? If somebody has children, I don't have children, I look with envy. If they have wealth that I don't have, I look with envy. If they have, look at those who have less than you. This is what the Prophet taught us. Look at people who have less and it will make you grateful. You say, Alhamdulillah, I have more. If you don't have a new car, look at the person on a bicycle. The person on the bicycle should look at the person who is walking. The person who is walking should look at the person who is walking with a walker. The person with the walker should look at the one who can't move his legs. The one who can move his legs should look at the one who can move his legs or hands. The one who can move his hands or legs should see is the one who can move any of those and cannot talk. So then we appreciate the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among his grateful servants and to have qana, contentment with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his wisdom has destined for us. So inshallah now we are going to take a break for about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll gather for the next session which is on al-adl or justice inshallah.